Hello, this is John from caveofprogramming.com. This is another video in my um, JavaScript and Node.js for Complete Beginners course. And in this video, we're going to tackle approximating Pi. So we're going to do the exercise that I gave you in the last video. So the first step, as we've seen, is we want to get these numbers on the bottoms of these fractions here. So that's, we can think of the first term. So these are term, we call them terms of the equation. Oh, by the way, I, I want to mention that uh, people often ask, do you need to know a lot of mathematics to do programming? And the answer is no. I picked a mathematical example, but you could have a career in programming and this might end up being, in a way, the most mathematical thing you ever do. You know, so don't be put off by the idea that programming is mathematics because it isn't. But anyway, you can think of this first term here as 1 divided by 1. And that will help because then the numbers on the bottom here are 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. So the first step is, let's see if we can write a program that outputs the values 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. And if you had a go at this and you, you didn't manage to do it, then do feel free to stop at any point and implement whatever bit of this you think you might be able to implement. So um, we're going to need a loop. Let's leave that console.log math.py in, in here. Um, but I'll move it to the bottom and actually I'll comment it out. So in other words, if I put two uh, slashes at the beginning, that turns the rest of the line into a comment, which is useful for documentation, but it doesn't actually do anything in terms of your code. So that, that's quite a useful thing to do. And we call this commenting something out where we temporarily turn it into a comment and deactivate it. Okay, so um, if I've got a loop, I'm going to need a counter. Let's create a loop counter and set it equal to naught. And then I'll have while counter, let's put less than five initially, just some small value while we're developing this. So I've got my brackets and I write counter plus plus. So now we've got a loop, but there's nothing in the loop. Um, so now let's maybe create a value, which will create a variable, which we're going to add two to every time. So the variable is going to um, is going to be have values one, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. So I'll call this. Well, since this is going to end up on the bottom of our fraction, and that's called the denominator, I'm going to call this denominator. Din, din om inator equals one to start with. Then in the loop, I can add two to that every time. So denominator equals denominator plus two. Now, if we output it down here, um, the first value that we see will be one plus two, which is, of course, three. But if we output it here, above where we in increase the value of it, the first value will be 1, which is what we want. So let's write here. In fact, I'll put these two lines together because they're kind of similar. Console.log denominator. All right, and let's run this and see if we've succeeded so far. So node pi js, and we see we've got 13579. That's exactly what we want. Now, the other thing that we, we need here is um, so we need to form a fraction and uh, we actually we could do that step next. Let's just do that. So instead of outputting 13579, we need to output 1 divided by 1, 1 divided by 3, 1 divided by 5 and so on. And that's pretty easy to do. So all we have to do is change this to 1 divided by denominator. And if we run this and we've got 1 divided by 1, 1 divided by 3, or a third, 1 divided by 2 is a half. Um, sorry, 1 divided by, what am, I, what am I talking about? This is 1, that's 1 divided by 3. This is 1 divided by 5, 0 0.2. 1 divided by 7, 1 divided by 9, and so on. So um, actually, uh, so the different bits of an equation, like in this case, 1 um, a third, a fifth, and so on. They're called terms in the equation, just in sort of mathematical language. So I'm going to write here, let term equal. So we'll store that in a variable for convenience. And we can output that if we want. And our program, the output of it is unchanged. 
There we go. All right. Um, so now the next thing that we need is we notice that we've got this sort of sign alternates here. We've got to add on, we've got to subtract a third, add a fifth, subtract a seventh. So we could think of this as being uh, that, like we're always doing additions, but what we're doing is we're, we're adding minus a third, and then we add a fifth, and then we add minus a seventh, and so on. To get these alternating plus and minus signs, we can create a variable which we multiply, which starts off at the value 1, and uh, we multiply it by minus 1 every time. So let's, let's try that. So I'm going to call this variable sign and set it equal to 1. And then here, where we're sort of changing values of things, I'm going to write sign equals sign times minus 1. And then let's output that. So instead of outputting term here, I'll output sign. And that should give us an alternating 1 and minus 1. Let's run it. Yeah, that's working. So now, if we take our term and multiply it by sign, we should get 1 minus a third, and then plus a fifth, and then minus a seventh, and so on. So let's write, um, let term equal sign times 1 divided by the denominator. And then we'll output term again. We'll try this. And that seems to be working. So we've got 1, we've got minus a third, we've got plus a fifth, we've got minus a, minus a seventh, plus a ninth, and so on. And that's exactly what we want. Now all we have to do is add all of those up and at the end multiply them by 4. Because this gives us an approximation for pi divided by 4. So we're going to have to multiply it by 4 at the end to get pi. So um, let's create another variable. Let's call it sum, set it equal to naught. And then what we'll do is every time we go around the loop, um, I'm going to just say sum equals sum plus uh, term. And then we'll find that our sum should get closer and closer to pi. After the program's finished, closer and closer to pi, divided by 4 that is. So sorry, after the loop, not the program, after the loop's finished, we can then write let pi equal sum times 4. And we can do console.log pi. And then let's output, let's uncomment this console.log math.py so we can see how close our pi is to the um, actual pi. Let's try it. So at the moment, not very close. We can see it's in the right sort of area. But um, the thing is, we've not added on enough terms to get a sort of realistic value for it. Let's try a 1,000. And then if I run this, yeah, we get it's pretty close now. Pretty close. Let's try 5,000. And this, this will still execute in the blink of an eye, even on an old computer. And we can see that we're getting closer. The first few digits are correct. Um, maybe try 20,000. Yeah, now we've got, we've got a few more digits. Uh, so 14159, it doesn't go wrong until here. And you can try more if you want, like, um, you know, like uh, a million or something. How many is that? Let's take a look. So, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's a million terms. And if we run that, then, yeah. So you can see that the more terms you add, the closer it gets to pi. This is a, a kind of known downside of the Leibniz approximation that it doesn't, um, it doesn't converge to pi very quickly, meaning you have to add a, a lot of terms to get a value that's, um, that's accurate for more than a few digits. But you can see that this is basically working. And if we were to go on and add more and more uh, of the terms in our equation here, we will get 
exactly what we want. Now we can write this program a little bit more nicely here. So if, if I was writing this not for explanatory purposes but just for myself, I would have condensed this more. Um, I wouldn't have put probably term in a separate variable for example, would have just written it down here and so on. But one simple thing that we can do is, um, is we can use a slightly different operator at certain points here. So instead of writing sum equals sum plus term, we can write sum plus equals term. And a plus equals operator will just add on whatever's on the right to the existing value, the existing variable value on the left. So this, this means sum equals sum plus term. Sum plus equals term, we're just adding term to sum every time. And we can do the same uh, with times. Instead of writing sine equals sine times minus one, we can write sine times equals minus one. It's kind of something that can make your code look a lot nicer. Here's a simple example. Um, instead of denominator equals denominator plus two, denominator plus equals two. And if this seems confusing, just practice it in a really simple program. Don't use a loop, just take a variable and try using plus equals and times equals just to see what they do. And you'll find that they're actually really not so bad at all. Um, so uh, I think that's, that's it really for this video. Let's just try this and check that it still works. Yeah, it's still fine. And you could, you know, you could simplify it in a way just by not having a separate variable for term. So, I mean, you could take this and put it down there, you know, rather than storing it in a variable, say sum plus equals sine times one divided by denominator. Um, okay, so we'll leave it there for this video. If you just found that too complicated, don't worry at all. And you're not going to need mathematics knowledge here. Um, most of programming, it's, it's about logic and you learn the logic at the same time that you learn programming. It's not really about, you know, mathematical approximations unless you're working in that kind of a field, a sort of mathematical field. So if you found the exercise too hard, don't worry at all. It is just an exercise. But the important thing is to try to do these things, do whatever bits of them you can. And if you didn't try to do this exercise, make up some exercises of your own, just whatever you can think of. It doesn't matter even if they're ridiculously simple. They don't have to be something like really serious sounding, like some serious mathematical thing. Just make up some silly exercise, challenge yourself to do it and see how far you get, you know. And if you keep doing that, your programming will steadily improve. Okay, so we'll leave it there for this video. Until next time, happy coding.